Welcome to the Bristol Motor Speedway in Thunder Valley, Bristol, Tennessee. It is time for NASCAR Nextel Bud Pole Qualifying. And the future is now for the car of tomorrow. You saw the new look on the front end of those race cars. The car of tomorrow debuts here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. It's a beautiful afternoon, temperatures in the mid-70s, which is a nice departure from last year when it snowed on this day. A wintry mix, as Carl Edwards would call it. Uh, a historic day here at the Bristol Motor Speedway. Glad to be with you. Let's take a look at the menu here on speed coming your way. Bud Pole qualifying starts in just a few moments. We'll have another NASCAR Live at 5 o'clock and trackside at Bristol. Kurt Busch, who has five of the last 10 wins here, will join us, as well as David Stremme, who's had an impressive start to this 2007 NASCAR Nextel Cup season. Well, as I said, Bud Pole qualifying headed your way in just a few minutes. Let's take a look at practice and find out who was fast as the car of tomorrow debuts on the high banks. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car, he has back-to-back -back wins, but he's never won here at the Bristol Motor Speedway, fifth fastest. Tony Raines, an impressive practice. They get a lot of help from Joe Gibbs Racing, and Joe Gibbs Racing cars tested well here at Bristol in the Car of Tomorrow test. Jeff Gordon, five Bristol wins. He's led over 2,400 laps and has led 11 of the last 12 races here. Ryan Newman has two Bristol poles, but never a winner. He has one top five finish here on this high bank half mile. Fastest. Denny Hamlin, just two cup starts here, but again, as Larry McReynolds reported during testing here, the Joe Gibbs cars have all been impressive as the car of tomorrow rolls out. Further evidence, you have Tony Stewart, his teammate there in the eighth position. Scott Riggs and Casey Kane, Everham teammates, trying to bounce back from slow, slow starts to this season. Dave Blaney from Bill Davis Racing and Greg Biffle rounding out the top 10. Also of note, Regan Smith, who is driving that 0-1 Chevrolet. We had hoped to see Mark Martin, but he is sticking by his guns. Not here. Regan Smith, 15th fastest in the 0-1 car. Well, Bob Dillner, so much to talk about today. Where do we start? Yeah, several big stories, and I think you need to start with the car of tomorrow because it, today it is the car of today. NASCAR making history here at the Bristol Motor Speedway, but several other stories we're going to be talking about on shows like Trackside Live and NASCAR Live all weekend long. One of them is the top 35 in owner's points. After this race, a brand new top 35 locked in for the next event when we get to Virginia and Martinsville Speedway next week. One of those guys that is in the top 35 right now, but on the bubble, Tony Raines. Very good practice session, as you mentioned. And let's first talk about that because that's pretty impressive for you to come here, be fourth fastest in the first practice session with this brand new car. Well, we we had a pretty good test in uh, you know a month or so ago with the uh, new Impala. SS and and uh, you know this practice session went pretty good so uh, you know we're optimistic we can we can repeat that uh, during qualifying that's what we count. How much different will it be between qualifying and the race setup of this race car? Well, I don't I don't think at uh, some race tracks that uh, your qualifying package and your race package is as far apart. Um, you know this one here is not that far apart as I was getting at. It's uh, you know we'll make some small changes, but uh, some other race tracks you might wholesale change it. But uh, the banking here is making the car travel so much that uh, you're 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 pretty stiff to start with. So um, hopefully it'll be a good race package also. And, of course, the other thing to throw into the equation right now, 31st in owner's points is this team, the DLP team for Tony Raines. So are there any butterflies going into this weekend to try to keep yourself in that top 35? Well, you know, we'd certainly like to be in a little better position, but, uh, you know, Atlanta was a little bit of a hiccup for us. So I think when I got in this car last year, you know, we were 33rd or 31st in the points then. So it's not much different really but uh, other than I, I think that we've uh, raced a little better already early in the year and we just got to keep working on our stuff you know and uh, have good race you know Bristol's tough you know we can come out of here with some luck and have a great finish and you know we can get bit but uh, you know I think we'll be fine here and then we'll go to Martinsville and if, uh, if we're not in the top 35 we'll work our way into it. Tony Raines looking pretty good here at the Bristol Motor Speedway like I said he's hoping to stay in that top 35 in owner's points and well, look who I found. I, I thought the point leader wasn't going to be here, but Mark Martin, he's here at Bristol. Dude, what are you doing here? 
Well, Bob, I'm, I'm just so happy to be here. This one's for the fans. That's what it's for. It's for the fans. Well, Mark, if you're here and you got the driver's suit on, uh, are you going to step into that 01 car and maybe uh, go another race since you are the point leader? Now, Bob, don't start that up again. I told you not to start that up again. I'm just here to support my team. Well, there you have it. Mark Martin here in the Bristol Motor Speedway garage area. Steve, surprised to see him. Well, last week he told DW to shut up during trackside, so you I got off that. flight. You got I, off flight, Bob. He was pretty easy on me, but <laughs> I did hear that. That was pretty funny last week. It was. Uh, 34 different drivers have won on this Bristol Motor Speedway since it opened in 1961. Bud Pole qualifying coming up. We will remind you that the All-Star Week is on speed this season, May 16th. It's the Pit Crew Challenge. Check out pitcrewchallenge.com or just take it easy like that guy on the 17 team. You won't be ready for the Bristol race here unless you watch NASCAR race day built by the Home Depot with John Roberts, Kenny Wallace, Jimmy Spencer, and Wendy Venturini. It all begins this Sunday morning at 1130 Eastern here on Speed. Back at the Bristol Motor Speedway, so glad you're with us. An exciting weekend as the car of tomorrow debuts. Love it. Shorts and t-shirt weather. Last year it was snowing, as we said. Quite an improvement. Let's take a look at our point standings early in this 2007 season. Mark Martin, the points leader, not here. He is in Lake City, Florida. He will also not go to Martinsville next week. Our NASCAR Hot Pass Direct TV point standings show Chevrolets driven by Jeff Gordon, Jeff Burton, Jimmy Johnson in positions two through four. Matt Kenseth having an outstanding season. Tony Stewart almost pulled off the win last week. Top 10 rounded out by Carl Edwards. As we said, Bud Pole qualifying is headed your way. Let's go down into the garage and check in with JR. Hey, Steve, one guy who's off to a pretty good start so far this weekend is Scott Riggs. Scott, you had a fast car in the practice session. How is that going to translate over to qualifying? Well, I hope, hope it's going to be fast. Um, you know, it's going to be pretty uh, easy to make a mistake out there. One, every little bit counts here. Bristol's always such a very tight uh, qualifying uh, order as far as the times go. It's very uh, very small increments that separate everyone. So just got to make sure that we go out there and get two good laps in. And this is a huge learning curve for everybody here this weekend. Do you feel like everybody's starting from square one, that everybody's on a level playing field? Uh, I mean, not really. I still think that, you know, the strong teams are still going to be strong, and uh, the people that are smart about their decisions and how they adjust their cars are going to be at the top. So I think that you'll still see some guys that usually don't struggle, struggle, and some guys that maybe usually don't find their car to be as good all of a sudden run up front. So I think you'll have a little bit of mixing uh, going on through the field, but I still think that all in all, everybody will still be, uh, you know, still be racing cars and still be making adjustments and still trying to get around Bristol. Um, I feel good about our Vaveline Stanley Tools Dodge because uh, I think that, you know, we knew what the car needed to feel like to be good on long runs in August last time here. So even though we got a different car and it's going to take some different tweaking to make it happen, I still think we've got a good baseline. Now, you always need a little bit of luck every time you come someplace. The luck of the draw is what determines when you qualify. You guys go out 13th. Do you think that's going to make much a difference with the sun beating down on the pavement today? Um, it's going to mean a little bit. I mean, I, I think that the good thing about Bristol is that you qualify so fast, and it takes such a little amount of time to get the whole field qualified. I don't think the track's going to change a lot over the course of uh, the first guy, the last guy. All right, so, Scott, you guys haven't gotten off to the kind of start you wanted this season. You've seen this thing from both sides in the uh, top 35 in points, outside of the top 35 in points. How important, then, therefore, is a uh, good finish at this racetrack? I mean, we need to finish good every week. You know, ever since these, these Daytona, we, you know, we've been behind the eight ball and really not running well, not getting good finishes. And, you know, I think that every week it's more important for us to get ourselves going in the right direction, have some good finishes, and, and start working our way up into points. But there's nothing we can do as a team different. I feel like that we're doing the right things, we're making the right decisions. We just, you know, have parts failures and things like that that are they're sort of taking us out. And uh, I feel like that we're still doing a good job as a team. We just haven't had the results that, to, to show for it. All right, Scott Riggs, thanks a lot, man. We appreciate your time. Best of luck out there on the racetrack, Steve. Six quickest in practice, goes out 13th in qualifying. And right now, these guys are hoping for a good run out of this very historic first car of tomorrow race. Yeah, the 10 bunch, they sure need one, John. Hey, I'm curious, being down there in the garage, a lot of teams were apprehensive about the inspection process coming into this race. Uh, did, how did everything go down there today, John? 
Well, today was much smoother uh, than yesterday, I guess you might say, because NASCAR had the foresight to say, okay, it's going to be a very difficult inspection process because it's new on everybody. They had the inspection line open on Thursday for the first time in a long time to get a look at these race cars, and so everybody could get through 10 hours of inspecting yesterday. Still didn't finish everything up. They finished it up today, but uh, it was pretty good foresight on their part, uh, Steve, to know to, quali to start inspecting them before qualifying day so everybody would have the same amount of practice, and that was what they achieved today. Yeah, smart move. And John, I also read that they're going to do the same thing next weekend in Martinsville on the short track there. 40 different drivers have a pole position on this tough Bristol Motor Speedway track. There's one of our young fans who's getting ready for butt pole qualifying. You'll see it after the break with Mike Joy, DW, and Larry Mack. In Eastern Tennessee sits Bristol Motor Speedway, the short track that packs them in like a super speedway, 160,000 strong, comes Sunday for the Food City 500. Today, for the first time in NASCAR since the early 1970s, the wing is the thing, that curious appendage that sits on the deck lid of every Nextel Cup car. And if you have a nose for news, something else is new, and it's the nose on what we've been calling the car of tomorrow, with its rather different shape and with its splitter instead of a valence to uh, separate the car from the road. And all this has been a handful to NASCAR teams and inspectors over its one-year gestation. But finally, it is birthed. The car of tomorrow is the car of today. And Matt Kenseth will be the first driver to test the track in Budweiser pole qualifying, driving his Arby's number 17 and with his crew chief back up on the pit box this week. Robbie Reiser calling the shots for the 17 team. And Matt in the 17 car was 18th quickest in practice. These teams had an hour and a half practice. There's actually 48 cars here trying to qualify, actually 49 cars. And Bristol is still Bristol, Mike, because of those 49 cars, they were within a half a second from the slowest to the fastest. Well, it's a new day. Well, actually a whole new weekend with this car. I mean, uh, this is a whole new animal right here. There you see Robbie Riser in the yellow shirt. Gave Matt his times there. Picked up a little bit on lap two at a 15.66. So everything is new except the NASCAR on Fox crew. As Matt Kenseth completes his run, we're all back. Uh, and there is no crew of tomorrow. Sorry, Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Darrell Waltrip with you here once again. But everything down on the racetrack is new. And Darrell, you had a chance to put some laps in in a car of tomorrow here last night. Yeah, I drove around some. And, you know, from a driver's perspective, uh, they talk about the car being a little different inside, you know, different seat, set in a different spot and all that kind of stuff. But from a driver's perspective, same old car. It's got a steering wheel, it's got brakes, it's got gas, and that's all I noticed the wing doesn't bother you the way the thing feels felt about normal and, and I think the biggest thing is the teams they've just had to approach the setup of these cars differently you can't travel them as much and and they were all here about two weeks ago testing and I think they learned that right off the bat what you did last year with this car at least for now will not work in the current configuration the car was tight hard to make it turn it's got such a short nose and then that long back end with a wing up on there you got a lot of rear down force and not near enough front a lot of unknowns, uh, especially aerodynamically, and two, uh, questions for the pit crew and how they'll do their job having to work their way around the splitter and around the wing. Well, that's something I'm sure we're going to go to Jeff Hammond a lot down there at the Hollywood Hotel is, yeah, it's going to slow the pit stop down, the rear tire changers as they come around the back of that car. they got to be very careful with those end plates, but the way they make adjustments, it's not going to be able to be done the same way like the catch can guy. In fact, the rear tire care will have to make probably a lot of these adjustments on pit stops. Yeah, I just wonder, the other thing I'm worried about and wonder about and I'm curious about is how fragile this thing is I mean with that splitter and the wing and those are things that the car is very dependent upon if you damage those what kind of race car are you gonna have so it'll be an interesting weekend here in Thunder Valley as Ryan Newman is on a pole sitting run right now 15 503 he's the fastest of three ahead of Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick now this is the track record holder here, which is in the sub-15 second. Don't think that's going to go down, but this man was second fastest in practice. Coming up, Paul Menard, Kurt Busch, and Carl Edwards. 
Speed's presentation of Bud Pole Qualifying from Bristol Motor Speedway is presented by Husqvarna, your total source solution for outdoor power equipment. Paul Menard will be the fourth driver to take time in the P. Canafreeze Menards Chevrolet, not a Monte Carlo. With the car of tomorrow template, Chevy has elected to run the Impala body style. This car is just uh, really not getting through the corner well at all. Uh, Looks like it's really, really tight with him. It wasn't going through the turns very fast. And Mike, one of the big stories coming into Bristol besides the car tomorrow is the fact this is the fifth race of 2007. When we leave here, we will go to the current owner points. This team right here comes in here 36 in owner points, one spot away from that key top 35. All right, let's go pit side and join Matt Yoko. Mike, the very first qualifier out today, Matt Kansas. So describe your qualifying lap in the car tomorrow, Matty. Uh, well, it wasn't very good. I just didn't, didn't do a very good job. Uh, it's going to bury us deep in the field, I'm afraid. But uh, I got through one and two really good to second lap and uh, just got too slow in the middle three and four. I just couldn't get through the center and it made it too loose off and just uh, just had a bad lap. So I missed it by at least a tenth of where we needed to be probably. So it's uh, extremely difficult this weekend to go from a bush car to a car tomorrow. They drive extremely different. and uh, Big transition. Yeah, it was a big transition. Matt Kent, a two-time winner here in the fall race, looking for his first spring win in Nextel Cup here in Thunder Valley. And this cat right here has got his hands full, too. The thing will not stay on the bottom. Uh, it goes into one and just shoots up the hill like possibly it's bottom and out or down, hitting down on a bump stop or something. And that's a really not, uh, not a very good effort there. Yeah, he slows down. He's not even in the 15-second bracket, but Daryl, not a big surprise. That's about where he was in practice session. Struggling. Dick Bergren. Juan Pablo Montoya has won the Grand Prix of Monaco. He has won Indianapolis. But you're about to make your first start here. What do you make of this place? Oh, it's crazy. I think it's a great place to race, you know. You know, our Texaco Hobbling Dutch car today has it's been really good in practice. The qualifying dream, I think I'm missing a little bit more than the car. The car has been really good. I'm just not, you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable now, but, you know, it's hard. You know, we just finished that bush practice and both cars handle so different that it's like, in my mind, I'm like, what do I have to do? It's like trying to remember exactly what you got to do. So it's a pretty tough job right now. Boy, if it's challenging for him, imagine somebody else coming in cold. Wow. Okay, see Carl Edwards just about wrecked going into three there. You know, uh, or into one. Uh, Montoya says it's a great place to race, and he hadn't even raced here yet. <laughs> out there by himself. I want to hear him say that Sunday after the race. For the way that car looked, his first lap, pretty good lap, and uh, he runs about the same. Yeah, he was. I guarantee you, he turned her sideways into one but that first lap. He's second fastest by just six one hundred. We concur. Matt? Six tenths great off his... Job. Six tenths off his track record is Ryan Newman. Pretty pleased with that, though? Yeah, it was close to what we ran in practice. You never know. I mean, <clears throat> a little bit hotter. Just a good run for our Altel Dodge. We had a really uh, not so good test here at the car tomorrow. The guys did a great job. Michael Nelson, the guys back at the shop, did a great job to bring him back and be faster and just uh, look forward to the rest of the weekend. Tony Stewart was eighth fastest in practice. He's on track right now in the Home Depot Impala. There's just so many things you don't know. You can't ex anticipate all the things that's going to happen with this car, like taping the nose up to qualify. How's that going to affect this car and what's it going to be like? Greg Zipidelli on the pit box. Wow, pretty good first lap. Yep. 1533. That's faster than anyone ran in practice earlier today. And it's uh we're still pretty much in the heat of the day. We've seen some cars pick up, some slow down here, and he'll slow down on lap two. One thing with the car tomorrow is are we going to see that splitter pinned to the racetrack in the corners like we did the front valence on the old car? Mike, it wants a little bit of gap underneath it. And NASCAR has a rule change on this car tomorrow. The very top side of that splitter right there, this is a rule I thought they should have instilled on the current car. It's always been a minimum height. That height of that cannot be higher than four and a half inches off the ground. So that keeps them, that's one thing that has made them have to go to a little bit stiffer setup in these cars. That's part of that keeping everybody in the same box. And that's a tight box. Joe Nemechek on track in the Gin Motorsports number 13. The certain teed car. Now Nemechek not happy with practice. Slowest car that was here, and this is a car that has to qualify on time. He has qualified on time the first four races of 2007. Sixth at a 1570. Looking to pick it up. This looks, the car doesn't look bad, but you know, if you, it's Ooh. loose off. That's the only thing wow. I notice about it. Slows down quite a bit on lap two. 
Lost a lot of forward bite coming off turn four as that car got loose. Tony Stewart's quickest coming up. David Stremme, Regan Smith, Brian Vickers. David Stremme will be the ninth driver to take time. New colors for his Dodge. Energizer batteries on the car and a new look for Dodge. This is not the Charger. This is the Avenger, their new midsize car. You know, Mike, one of the things that I heard uh, uh, Kansas say, and I think it's going to really play out to be true with this car tomorrow, the Bush car and this car are so different, it can really mess you up. Actually, Montoya said the same thing when we interviewed him, DW, and, and I couldn't help but sit up here and think as we were watching Bush practice. These guys had cup practice much earlier today. They just spent over two hours in that Bush car then have to go straight to this cup car to qualify. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big deal. Good run for Stremme. He's fourth quickest. Dick? Jeremy Mayfield hasn't made any of the races so far this year, Mike, but he has got a fast car here at Bristol. Second quick. Is this it? We're going to see you on Sunday? I certainly hope so. I've been saying that every week, but I hope uh, hope this week to be the week for our 360 OTC Toyota. And uh, just everybody at Bill Davis Racing. We're working so hard and hadn't showed yet, so hopefully this will be the week we can show what we got. All right. Your fans are still with you. Get there in the show. Now, the Internet rumors that that team was shutting down were greatly exaggerated. Bill Davis put all that to rest this week. Well, let's see what Mark can do. Mark Smith, Regan Martin, <laughs> they're sharing the ride this year, and Mark Martin steps out of the point lead, and Regan Smith is in the car as planned for Bristol. He's he on a pretty good run right now. I, I tell you, the car looked good. It's good in practice, too. Yes, sir. Second quickest at a 15:41. And, Mike, one of the most frequently asked questions over the last three or four weeks, what, what, what does this do for this car as far as possibilities of a chase? I got word yesterday from NASCAR that we will have, obviously, the top 10 drivers in the chase for the next Dell Cup, but the top 12 owners will be in it as well. So the 0-1 could well be in the owner's chase for that title, Matt. Tony Stewart working on his second official pull here in Thunder Valley and a very fast flying brick. A fun challenge trying to get that feel in this car tomorrow. It's different, but I mean, it's like like I've been talking about for a couple weeks since that test. I mean, we, everybody knew that when we all got a chance to test here and then let the engineers go back, that, that we'd all be a little better and they'd feel a little better when we got here. But it uh, you know, still doesn't feel like the old cars by any means, but, uh, you know, it's uh, this, this one's this in Palo SS is pretty good, though, so far. I mean, that's a lot better than I thought I was going to qualify, so I'm pretty happy with my run. Let's we'll see if he can hold on and score his second pole here in Thunder Valley. Mike? Brian Vickers is fourth quickest with a 1551 in his Camry. That's good news because this is one of the go or go home cars become the first Toyota to ever lead a lap in Nextel Cup last week in Atlanta and did it most of the race on seven cylinders. They had a spark plug that was broken that car. Yeah, I think that you'll see some better performance out of these Toyotas over the next couple of weeks. They've been relying heavily on this car tomorrow. They've done a lot of work with a lot of research. Plus, they've been working on the motor. Larry, as you mentioned, the uh, top 35 using this year's points after Bristol. And here is the danger zone. Right now, Jeff Green, 35th in this year's owner points, and the drivers in yellow, and how far out of 35th their car owners are. So if we had to qualify on this year's points today, drivers like Casey Kane, who won the most races last year, would have to get in the field on time, so would Dave Blaney. In fact, right now, of our seven full-time Toyotas, Dale Jarrett, the 44, that's the only Toyota Camry in the top 35 in owner points. Boy, Riggs just took a shot at uh, Tony's pole run there, a 38 to a 33. Good run for uh, Riggs right now. The Valvoline Dodge second quickest. And backs it up with a nice lap that's only about five one hundred slower. So he's seven one hundred six one hundredths off Tony Stewart for the pole. And you can see the nose of that car, the Avenger there of, uh, of Riggs is it's all taped up solid. No air going into the grill. You get around here in 16 seconds. You're not going to get the engine hot in that amount of time. Yeah, that, that part at the top right there, that's actually just somewhat of a fake decal. There's no openings up there. It's all at the bottom there on the bumper and just above the splitter. Ricky Rudd carrying the pedigree colors this week on his Robert Yates Ford. And it is still a fusion. Ford and Toyota did not change models for the car of tomorrow as Chevrolet and Dodge did. Got old dog on the side of that car. His old tongue's hanging out. I told him, I said, y'all need to feed old Jake. He's not looking good. <laughs> well, you think there'll be a bunch of drivers looking like that after 500 oh, laps yeah, here on yeah. Sunday. 
first lap 1551 fifth quickest he was 38th in practice fastest forward so far I think you get to a track like this uh, Ricky rather be very comfortable and I think it'll run pretty good 56 career starts here his first start was in 1975 he finished 10th he made eight hundred dollars that day eight hundred dollars eight hundred dollars yikes we've come a long way took everybody out to dinner too what a difference a year makes last year we were snowed out in thunder valley some drivers and and fans in the stand had snowball fights back and forth Today, it is beautiful weather, and Sunday, it's going to be near 80 degrees here. Could have went all weekend without seeing that first shot there. <laughs> Brought back long bad as, memories. As long as it's in the past. <laughs> Only thing I remember is those snow angels. They were not pretty. Kenny Wallace for Furniture Row Racing. Now, they come in here 45th in owner points, but Wallace has a good lap, 15.51. Seventh, but more importantly, second among the go or go homers, Dick. Well, if anybody's going to knock Tony Stewart off the pole, it's going to be his teammate, Denny Hamlin, because there were three test sessions here with the car tomorrow. This guy was fastest in two out of the three and fastest in practice this morning. What do you got that the rest of the guys wish they had? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what the twins got. So, uh, no, I don't know. They uh, they put our setup in. It seemed to be working really good for them. And, uh, tough to say. You're going to have the choke packer might have might play a role in uh, whether we get the pole today. But uh, either way, uh, I'm just proud that we're going to be able to be here and be competitive. Uh, he's got four poles so far. You see that it's going to be number five today, Mike. Casey Kane on track. He needs to race his way into the top 35. And he's on shot for the pole. Takes it away from Tony Stewart. By two one hundredths of a second. You saw the graph a while ago. This is one of the two of the Everham cars that's in that danger zone out of the top 35 right now. Pretty good second lap, 1536. And like Robbie Riser with Matt Kenseth, Kenny Francis is back this week with Casey Kane after a four week suspension, four race suspension. And that's going to make the difference. You better believe it. Kenny position, Francis. Position one for Casey Kane. You know, though, Daryl, I did hear where with Kenny Francis and Robbie Riser both being gone, besides certainly working hard for these teams for the first four races, they put a lot of effort at the shop on this car tomorrow since they couldn't be at the racetrack. Really. Yeah, I think that's probably what they've been doing. Ward Burton driving for the locally based Morgan McClure team. Their shop, you can see it from Interstate 81, just across the state line in Abingdon, Virginia. And Ward has to time his way in. He's the quickest of the go or go homers. It got 15, away from him. 44. And he yeah. did that in testing, Larry. He had a really fast lap and then uh, almost well, well, he did. Buddy. That's a good lap right there. Don't worry about it. Great job. Proud of you. He was trying to get four, four, three. Trying to get a little bit more on lap two and it just didn't work out. But that pretty good first lap there. He could have worked out just fine. There are 14 drivers here for eight spots in the field. And there's the big wiggle. But yeah, Ward Burton, I uh, 44 that's that's going to race on I, Sunday. I'm assuming that's the car they probably tore up up here testing. It is Daryl just to tell you about some of these teams some of the maybe the teams that are not funded as well. Their backup car for here didn't get here till about noon today. They didn't finish it till in the middle of the night last night a backup car tomorrow. Here are the drivers who must time their way into the show. There are 14 of them. Dale Jarrett would have the champions provisional if needed. That would leave only seven spots available on time. We'll keep a close eye on that. Well, here's a guy right here that uh, if he's going to make a race, this ought to be the weekend he does it because he's been good in practice. And uh, Jeremy runs pretty darn good here. Let's see what he can do. Bill Davis reiterated this week that he's committed to Toyota to run two cars for the entire season. There were a lot of internet rumors about this team shutting down for Calgary to make races not true and here's Mayfield good lap with a 50. I call that a okay lap I think if I was him I'd like to pick it up a tenth but I don't know that you can do that on the second lap. But Daryl it looks like possibly if you run in the low 50s you may be okay mid to high 50s you're going to be a little bit borderline and uh, he's at a 52 on lap two right now seventh but the key is he's the second quickest of the go or go home. Second out of six who have run so far. So the 360 OTC Camry in with its lap. Now, if he loses the race, he doesn't lose his ride, but that's what happens every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Hicks.
David Gilliland in the Eminence Ford will be our 18th driver to qualify. Next comes Kyle Busch and Dave Blaney. You ought to like this uh, little short track here. You know, that's kind of where he, that's his area of expertise. Should like this joint. I don't think he's going to like that coming off turn four, though. That's something everybody's been fighting. In fact, I stood up here in practice. You could actually hear the car spinning the yes. rear tires on the exit of the corner. Yeah, Darrell, is that going to hurt both his laps when oh, yeah. it happens off turn four at oh, the yeah. end of lap one? Yeah, I don't think this will be any better. 1560 on lap one slows down 1577. He had his hands full on the throttle. These cars are so hard to make them turn in the middle of the corner. You jack that right rear up, that big spring in the right rear. That's what you get. Jump sideways up off the corner. And he is loose. That's snapping loose right there. Nice stave. That was uh, that was on the way to be in the Bristol Stomp. Kyle Busch, the Carquest Chevy from Hendrick Motorsports. Kyle comes in here 14th in points. Good lap coming. Got up the hill a little bit too much in three. I don't know if that'll hurt him or not. Let's see. 15.48 puts him six quickest. And uh, what a car he had last week in Atlanta. Had the problem with the loose wheel at the start of the race. Had a problem on a pit stop later on the race. If it uh, wasn't for pit road and wheels, he'd have, he'd have been a contender for sure. Second lap mirrors the first. So Kyle is sixth. Yeah, his Bush car and his Cup car have just been really, really fast. Hadn't gotten to Victor Circle <laughs> yet. Everywhere. Casey Kane quickest coming up. Dave Blaney, Clint Boyer, and Juan Pablo. Whoa, Montoya. <laughs> Dave Blaney in the Caterpillar Camry will be the third Toyota of seven to take time. Third fastest with a 1537. Blaney has consistently been the best of the Camrys this season on track. Pretty much backing up what he did in practice. He was ninth quickest earlier today, and uh, he's actually picked it up a little bit from that. Slows down lap two, but that first was a good one. Now he needs a finish because he is 39th in owner points in the danger zone. And he got his first finish last week. That was his first race that he didn't have a DNF at Atlanta. Matt? Casey Kane picked up two tests from practice, but Casey, could you pick a weekend that would be so important to have Kenny back on the box for you? Yeah, it's definitely important. We need to uh, finish this week and get some good points and, and go to Martinsville with, uh, in a better position than we are now. But, you know, that uh, Dodge Avenger felt pretty good right there. I was, I was got out of the Bush car, and I thought they were similar, and I'm going down the back stretch, and there's just this huge front window you're looking through and a lot of different things. But um, it felt good. I'm, uh, I'm excited for the weekend. You know, we hopefully have a real good run in our Dodge dealers here at W Dodge Charter. He was 10th here a year ago, Mike. And that, that visual thing is part of the adjustment. Getting out of one car, you got a little bit different view out the windshield, and getting in another one, it affects how you get around the track initially. You adjust as quick as you make a few laps. We don't have time when no. we're qualifying. Clint Boyer and the Jack Daniels 07 for Richard Childress, seventh quickest, a 15.47 for Boyer. Had one of the harder crashes of all the cars that tested here two or three weeks ago, right at the end of the last day of practice. Dick Bergeron. Jimmy Johnson came into this year with three goals, win the championship, win on a road course, and win at Bristol. Fifth quick in practice, so far so good. Yeah, we're off to a good start. Uh, we've had we had a great test here uh, a couple weeks ago whenever we were up here, and it's been going well again today. So I'm looking forward to it. Two wins in a row as well. Would it be neat if this were the third? Juan Pablo Montoya, first look at Bristol Motor Speedway. Doesn't look very comfortable either. A little shaky getting into turn one. Looks better down here on this end of the racetrack. A little loose up off. Might have brushed it. Now, I tell you, that car just doesn't look like it's uh, underneath him at all. Get the wall coming off a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, <laughs> just uh, enough to make me quit. <laughs> he's Darryl, in the show. He's guaranteed in the show, and that lap was 17. Darrell, that first day of testing, they ran him 450 something laps. Actually, in that hour and a half this morning, he ran the most laps of anyone, 65 laps of practice this morning. Got a little damage on the right side, nothing serious. He'll take that if that's all that happened to him all weekend. Oh, yeah. A little concrete dust, a little white paint. Just gnarred her up a little bit. 
Sterling Marlin is on the go or go home list for the fifth week. Now he is 29th in points, so should he finish this race on Sunday, he will most likely be in the top 35 and be exempted, have a qualifying exemption next week. He should get around here pretty good. He likes this place, and he's been very successful here. I believe he needs to step it up a little bit, though. 15.53, he was 20th quickest in practice. It's looking more and more, almost yeah. like you said earlier, at least getting those 40s to feel safe. Yeah, I don't know. Here he comes. I'm thinking this might be a skosh better. If it is, he'll be the first one. 15.48. Much better. A skosh. I, th I think that's safe. That's close. And you know what's good news about that run right there? The local team, Ward Burton, yeah, 14, but Morgan McClure, they will race on Sunday. That, that's that right. That is so exciting for Ward and for the Morgan McClure crowd. Home track. Take a look at our ticker up on top when it cycles through. Uh, the cars in green are locked in on speed. The drivers shown in black have the qualifying exemption. Top 35 in 06 owner points. Cars uh, and drivers shown in blue have to make the show on speed. And if you're in red, you're headed home. Mike Bliss, very impressive in practice uh, earlier. Car 14th looks pretty quickest. Good, Mike uh, got a sponsor owner this week. Yeah, Obovo. That's a, a website. It's a, a big search engine website, obovo.com. 15.56, he's trying go. to make it better. Look, it's gotta looking go. good gotta here. Go, buddy. Gotta it's go. looking good. Yes, Ten. sir, 15.47, he will race on Sunday. Bad news is Paul Menard will not race. Yeah, I think that Paul and Joe, I don't know if it, that early draw hurt them or what, but they're both times are je in jeopardy. But that's two, two teams, drivers that struggled in practice too. Matt? But you and never know. Good job. And the cat car currently third. So with this car tomorrow, this weekend, and next week, are you guys pretty much on a level playing field with the new Toyota days? I don't know about that. It's just something different. But, you know, here it's the same old thing. You work on, you know, mechanical grip and balance. And so it's, it's just a little different looking piece, but it's the same thing. And that same thing is pretty fast right now for the cat team currently in the third spot, Mike. Oh. Danny Hamlin, can he get the pole? No. no. Not the way it looks right now. He got bad loose getting into turn three. He said something that really bothered me when he said it, the old choke factor. My teammate, I don't know what he did, but he said, uh, you know, the old choke factor might kick in here. Well, it looked a lot better through three and four that time. Not going to be a pole run, but he's working on the top five, 1540. In fact, he's fifth right now. Great recovery. It tells you how good that car could have been. Well, to the entry of turn three, he was on a pole run. Yeah. And we'll show you what happened. What goes in must come out. <laughs> it didn't, but, almost didn't work. But not sideways. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin LePage on track for Bob Jenkins in uh, this number 37. They have been running two cars, the 37 and 34, but the difficulty of making races has caused them to drop back and run a one-car effort. They may run a second car in a few shows, but not every week. So see what LePage can do here. Darrell, what he did on that second lap, he really drove it in three and four. You can see the tracker really come down, but he really paid the price exit and actually slowed down two tenths. He's on the bubble right now. Joe Nemechek, he has qualified for the first four races. On time, he will not race on Sunday. Here's a guy right here that uh, is sweating this all out. You can bet on that. So LePage puts himself in the show for the moment, but on to the bubble with a 1563 as J.J. Yaley in the Interstate Batteries number 18 comes out for Joe Gibbs Racing. This looks good to start. I don't know what he did on the offseason. I don't know who he talked to or where he went, but I need to find out. Whoa! That thing got off of the apron there, Larry, and got bad loose. Because this guy has come back this year with a vengeance, really yeah. trying to redeem himself. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that first lap of qualifying at a 15.78. Yeah, he's just getting it on the apron too much, Larry. He got on the apron uh, three and four, got him up to the sideways, and he did that down at one and two that time. Second lap is better and picks him up to 22nd fastest. Oh, you pick up a 10th in this field, you'll pick up several spots. Yeah, especially, I mean, it's hard to do on your second lap because the tires lose the goody pretty quickly. Saw his crew oh, chief Steve good. Addington I there. The dang apron getting into three there and it just turned me a little bit, got me loose. Roger. It's okay. David Rudiman has a new team. This is a go or go home effort for the Domino's Toyota. Now right this, now, the bump speed, 1563. Kevin LePage is the bubble, that is. 
Oh, David put a truck on the pole here a couple of years ago that uh, was mighty impressive. I can tell you that. He was 30th quickest in practice. He was good down in the middle of turn one and two. And same same deal. And oh, he just sliding goodness. off the corner. Really picks up a lot of ground getting in the corner, but pays the price coming off. Got her sideways coming off. And he'd been complaining about that all day long. Loose off up on the straightaway. And when you do that off four on the first lap, it hurts both laps. Rudiman's got to go. He's got to pick up here. It, it doesn't look good for this double zero car. I think the problem is a lot like David Gilliland, where he got loose coming to take complete lap one, hurt hurt lap two. And David Rudiman will not race on Sunday. He is 23rd fastest. That will lock Jeremy Mayfield into the show. Jeff Green and Reed Sorensen coming up. Fans, you grab the bud, I'll grab the trophy. Budweiser pole qualifying Jeff Green in the Best Buy Chevy. Fifth fastest with a 15.39. He's had some awesome runs here in the Bush cars. Uh, this is uh, doesn't come as a big surprise to me. He always runs well here at Bristol. Both the Haas cars, Jeff Green and Johnny Sauter, really good here at the test session two or three weeks ago, and uh, he almost backs it up yep. with a 15.41. And he needs a good finish, Larry, because he is 35th in owner points coming into this race, right on the bubble of getting a qualifying exemption next week. And beginning next week, that owner points ranking is dynamic. Every week, it's a new ball game, and you can move in and out of the top 35, well, every week. And you know, we're, we're just past halfway this qualifying session. We talked about this at the top of the show. Right now, the poll is a 1531. A 1565 will not race on Sunday. Yeah, hmm? uh, a 65 is not the not a great time, but it's uh, certainly, <laughs> compared to everybody else, it's not a bad time. off the pole right <laughs> That's now. That's right. Reed Sorensen. And that's the box you're in when you're not in the top 35. Man, it doesn't take but just a little to get you in. Doesn't take but a little to knock you out. Now the uh, target dodge, looking to make uh, Reed's third start at Bristol. 1566 on lap one. He runs the exact same lap down to the thousandths on lap two. Had a great run in Atlanta, got his first top 10 finish of the year. Finished 10th. These cars are kind of like the first time you ever went skiing. You know, you just hope you can get up. When you finally get up, you say, oh, gee, what am I going to do now? <laughs> how do I get down? Kind of how these cars are. You just don't know how. You're not real comfortable with where you are in the car. Basically one well, the first problem was getting off the ski lift, and that was these cars going <laughs> through the rigorous inspection process to be approved to run here. That egg thing that they dropped down over these cars today is just blows my mind. I've never seen anything like that. The claw. The claw. But you know what you're talking about? That's the reason I stay in the ski lodge and drink hot toddies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show you some of the inspection uh, that took place yesterday as Jeff Burton will be the next car to take time. And you'll see the egg crate or the cage or the claw. It has several names. All unofficial, none sponsored uh, Those so will, far. Uh, that will evolve, there it is. but there it is. And it's tethered in the back or it's hooked in the back to, this, to the wing location. That's the first one I've seen this right. Ooh. Jeff Burton on track in the singular Chevrolet for hadn't, Richard Childress. Hadn't been very happy, Larry, with his car. No, he has not. Ran a bunch of laps and uh, first lap 1552. But going back to that inspection process, it's going to be a learning process for the teams and for NASCAR. The good thing is, even though they had to open the track a day early, Every car had been inspected before the track opened for practice, which is a good thing. Jeff Burton, 18th quickest, almost the same time on his second lap. I think on the of less than the scanners and all, he was complaining the most. NASCAR wanted to eliminate the areas of teams moving the nose side to side, the tail side to side. So instead of putting the templates on the cars one at a time, they are all integrated into this cage. It's a uh, very interesting, very innovative, and uh, if it gives the team fits for a few weeks in the long run, it'll probably be good for everybody. That's the go. Boy, you could hear Casey Mears really into that rev limiter. That's another thing that I noticed in practice earlier today, but you know, one thing that will keep that driver from doing is driving it in so deep. And he probably hadn't hit it all day in practice, but now he's up on the, ch up on the chip <laughs> and uh, driving a little bit harder. 
Pretty good lap though, 1544. That puts him ninth quickest right now in the National Guard car. Now Mears is 32nd in owner points, so he also needs a solid finish here. There's Darian Grubb, and you know, I thought these two guys would really click. I thought they'd come out of the box, be a great pair of crew chief driver. Hadn't happened yet. Man that won the Daytona 500 last year with Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. Speed Fantasy Cup is full throttle and wide open, so don't miss your chance to win $10,000 in the next L All-Star Challenge. Log on to speedtv.com for more information and to sign up now. Robbie Gordon on track, and the saga continues for his Ford Fusion, all but blank of decals on the hood and quarter panels for one of the last remaining independent driver owners in NASCAR. And he did something in the offseason. He switched manufacturers. That's got to be kind of an expensive move as well, so he really needs to have something on the side of his car. First lap, 1558. Yeah, this is about what the car looked like a couple of weeks ago at Las Vegas. Pretty much blank quarter panels on there. See what Robbie can do on lap two, 1566. Right now, 22nd quickest, about mid-pack. But he's Whoa. in the show, and he's 16th in points, so. Man, came off the racetrack in a hurry. <laughs> Coming up, Dale Jarrett, Johnny Sauter. Dale Jarrett on track in the UPS Toyota. First lap, 15.55, somewhat borderline. Now, Kevin LePage, the bubble car right now at a 15.63. You know what that lap will do, though? For the first time in 2007, he will not start 43rd, it doesn't look like. He's used the championship provisional the first four races of the year. Well, we still have three more Gorgo homers to qualify that could push Jarrett back and out of that, out of a qualified spot on speed. Right now, only four drivers are locked in on speed. Burton, Bliss, Marlin, and Mayfield. We do know that Jarrett will race Sunday one way or the other. And here it's up to Johnny Sauter in the yellow transportation Chevrolet. You see the mark at 20th. That's where Jarrett is right now. You're absolutely right, Mike. He still could be knocked back into that championship provisional land, exactly. Now LePage is still on the bubble and Sauter is not quick enough on lap one. It's a big surprise. I thought he would really run well here. Uh, short track guy. Needs to find a tenth and a half. It's not gonna happen, right. I don't believe, at Struggled all. Struggled on that end of the three and four in again. Quicker, but not enough. Car, that's two cars now that made the first four races on time. Johnny Sauter and Joe Nemechek that will not race on Sunday. Now that will lock Brian Vickers into the race with his 1551. So it's between Kenny Wallace and Kevin LePage as to who stays and who goes with Michael Waltrip and A.J. Allmendinger, the must qualify drivers who have not yet run. Jeff Gordon in the DuPont Chevrolet. Pretty good in practice. Uh, not terribly happy with his car, but pretty fast. But Daryl, I tell you, I stayed up here the entire hour and a half, and, and I know he wasn't happy with his car, but his car actually looked good during that entire practice session. Looks it looks real oh. good right now. Looks better now. 1529. <laughs> he was fast in practice. He, I, I tell you, he and uh, Steve Latart Jeff kept telling Steve what it needed, and, and, and Steve is That'll really... Do it. Slows down on lap two, but lap one right now will be good enough. They have really got their communication down good, is what I'm trying to say. Steve and, and Jeff... 29, really one oh. Gordon trying for his fifth. Way to go. That thing was awesome. <laughs> He's happy now. Yeah. This would be, if it holds up, his fifth Bud Pohl at Bristol. He has 28 starts here. He leads all active all right, drivers. Man, great job, great job today, guys. With a total. You guys are awesome. Proud of you. Hey, you have to say you're sorry to Schrader. He, he had money on the 31 being the pump. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, the man has led almost 2,500 laps at this place. Kyle Petty in the marathon oil number 45. Pretty good in practice earlier. 11th quickest for this 45 car. 
First lap, 15.51, 20th quickest. You know, and Kyle made the point that they have been from day one at every uh, car tomorrow test. They were the first teams to build a car tomorrow. They've got a lot of time with this car and a lot of, uh, lot of experience. Mike, he's another one of those guys they want to leave here with a good finish yes. because he's 34th in owner points. You know what? The way he drives, his kind of race, he'll get him a good finish. Top 10 finish here a year ago. Yes, sir. Jeff Gordon climbing out right now. He is on the pole with a 15.29. Half-mile track and Gordon's speed, 125 and a half miles an hour. Wow. But here comes his teammate, Jimmy Johnson. Well, you know, I'm not going to say he can't do it. But I don't think he can. Flirting with the pole out of turn two and into three. It's going to be in the top five. I'm not sure it's going to be a pole run. 1537, fourth quickest for this 48 car. And that's that's a huge improvement too, because Chad was not talking kindly to his car earlier today. He's not done yet either. He lost a little bit there late exit of turn four. He'll slow down to 43, but uh, right now in the top five. A 29 right there, Larry. That's getting on down to where the old cars were. Yes, sir. Pretty yes, close. sir. Off through one and two. A little tight off of four. I had to breathe a both lap. Johnson has come from 37th in points after Daytona to fourth now. With a third and two wins in the last three races. And I know this is a 500 lap race, Mike, Daryl, and, and Daryl certainly knows this. Qualifying is so important here from a standpoint of track position for the drop of the green flag. But we talk about it, we'll talk about it all day Sunday. So important, pit selection. You've only really got four decent pits here. I only got one decent pit here. <laughs> the rest of them are just okay. Martin Truex Jr. Good lap, 10th quickest. The Bass Pro Shop Chevy, 1543. Bono got her tuned up today. Bono's his crew chief. This team just keeps on keeping on. They had a great run last week at Atlanta, finished eighth. A little slower, but right now in the top ten. Wondering and waiting, Kevin LePage with a 15.63. He is on the bubble. Coming up, Bobby Labonte, Elliot Sadler, and a little later, Dale Jr. Nice crowd on hand on a balmy Friday here at Bristol Motor Speedway. Jeff Gordon and Casey Kane currently the front row, but here comes Bobby Labonte in the Cheerios Dodge. That banana peel was appropriate because that's how it feels out there on a day like today when it's hot and slick. 17th in owner points. Bobby Labonte has two second row starts here. And this race was one of his three top five finishes last year. There's the king, Richard Petty. Spent a little time with him last night, didn't you, Mike? Yeah, yeah he and Kyle did some storytelling for, uh, to raise some money for the International Storytelling Center not far from Bristol. He may be the only guy here today in this whole, in this whole garage area that's ever driven a car with a wing on it. And Good one point. race is doing it. Yeah, and liked it. Matt? Jeff Gordon trying to usher in NASCAR's new era with the car tomorrow by being the first pole sitter. So. Was that a perfect lap from your standpoint, or was there something you left out on the table at one end or the other? Uh, you know, I think no matter how, what kind of lap you run, uh, especially here, there's always things you can do better. But we're setting up where we want to be right now. We we'll just keep our fingers crossed, watch the other guys. But, uh, you know, real proud of the guys on this uh, DuPont Impala SS. And uh, I got a little bit loose getting in the corner, but the only way you can get the cars through the corner is to have real loose getting in. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed at how fast we're going around here. I wouldn't expect to go this fast. And obviously, real impressed with my guys and how, how well they've just been tuning and getting better from our test, better each time we're on the track. Very close, but you are still on the pole. Sadler is close. It ain't over yet, but uh, I think it's going to need to be done the first lap. I, I, I gave up the second lap, did on the first lap. We'll just see. You know, there's guys that are definitely capable of doing it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. That was close for a lot of that first lap. Well, after last week, qualified outside pole. Uh, looked like they got their qualifying act down. Not even the same race car I had in practice. Ooh. And I think he meant that in a positive yeah, way. I don't, I don't think he was complaining. <laughs> no. no. I Sadler. listened to him on the scanner. It was definitely a positive comment. Sadler <laughs> is third fastest behind Jeff Gordon and Elliott's teammate, Casey Kane. In fact, all three of Ray's car, Ray Abraham's car, is in the top seven right now.
But you know what happens from practice to now. Everybody gets together. They all get, they debrief. You find out what's working and what isn't, and you throw it at it and hope it sticks. Kenny Schrader in the Wood Brothers Air Force 21 was the fastest of all cars into turn one, paid a little bit of the price coming out. And this looks like a top 10 or 15 run. Boy, that arrow jumps around a lot. The times are so close. 13 for no, Schrader. No, 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 he, he got He drove it in so hard it wouldn't stick. Yep. He tried for that little bit more. Why not? Second lap, there you door, go. and you know, maybe it'll hang. Maybe Good it'll first stick. lap. Issues over in three and four in a second. <laughs> yeah, yes. Issues. Just a couple. <laughs> one left, one right. Still nice, solid run for Schrader. Dick? With Greg Biffle, you've got a lot of experience in this place and in the old style car. How different does this one feel to you? Well, they're they're a little bit different. You know, they're not as different as I thought they were going to be before we came and tested. But I'm getting used to the differences in them. And uh, you know, we got this uh, you know Jackson Hewitt Fusion COT car running pretty good. But um, you know, the speeds have picked up a tremendous amount. So for us to stay in the top ten, we were top ten in practice qualifying speeds but uh, for us to stay there we're going to, have to pick it up a little bit and I guess COT isn't car of tomorrow it's car of today now right yes car of today okay Mike Tony Raines the DLP HDTV Chevy fast in practice I think he lost a little into three 1545 right now that puts him 15th quickest and his crew chief Brandon Thomas spent a lot of time when he was with Joe Gibbs Racing working on the car tomorrow project and I think it's paying off with this race team and with Tony. That looked better. No, can't do it. It's a good run though for this 96 car. I think he lost this enough time over in three getting into three that first lap. 15th quickest and he's just barely in the danger zone 31st in owner points. Yeah, right in the center of that first lap man sorry. It felt a little better. Well, there'll be two drivers watching this next car go out. Jeff Gordon will be watching him, and Kevin LePage will be watching closely. Michael Waltrip in the Napa Camry trying to get back into the show with the number 55. Glad it's him and not me. Man, talking about pressure. And he was 43rd quickest in practice. Right now, he needs to run faster than a 15.63, 15.638. Walter trying to make only his second start of 2007. He's Hard. got work to do from here. Car looked just like it was just a little slow. That's not any better. 15, 6, 8, 1. Yeah. He's only five one hundredths out of the show, but that's seven positions. He needs half a tenth. Nah, he couldn't get it. Didn't do it. Car got loose out of four and does not pick up. Michael Waltrip will go home. Kenny Wallace is locked in. That leaves one spot in the field to be decided as Kevin LePage hangs on to the bubble and A.J. Allmendinger has yet to run. Do you know when practice started, Mike, he was second quick for quite a while, and Ruderman was actually the quickest at one time. But then the other teams picked up speed, obviously, but uh, I know they had to start practice encouraged. Yep, yep. Well, is there any question who just went out? You can hear the <laughs> roar of the crowd. <laughs> now, here's a guy that's been out there, you know, for a couple hours in a bush car uh, to see how that affects uh, Dale Jr.'s run here. And he was decent in practice. He was 13th quickest in this Budweiser car. Well, he sent it in hard like Schrader, but it fell off coming yeah. off, too. And I think that's part of that bush thing. You know, those cars, you drive them in to turn a little bit harder, a little less horsepower. So Dale Jr.'s first lap, 29th quickest. Let's see if he can rebound here. See his crew chief, Tony Uri Jr. Well, you can just hear yeah. that thing spin the gotta, wheels. Got to say hi to his sister, too. Uh, she's having some surgery, I guess. And uh, Kelly, I'll just say hi to you, and we're praying for you. This car really shot up the racetrack in three and four on that lap, too, and it really paid the price on the stopwatch. So Jr. is 29th. Top of the board, Elliott Sadler's team is third. Casey Keynes is second. And Jeff Gordon is fastest. Speed's presentation of Budweiser Poll Qualifying from Bristol is presented by Husqvarna, your total source solutions for outdoor power equipment. Tell you what, pretty good That's lap for was. Jamie McMurray, fifth quickest uh, to 1536 on lap one. And you see how that car came off the racetrack there and how that splitter 
got down against the racetrack, it didn't hurt it. It kind of flexed up a little bit, and that's something he'd been worried about. It was pretty comical early this morning. Practice started at 10.30 Eastern time. It was almost like a fight to who was going to be the first car on the track for practice for COT. McMurray won the battle. He was the first car out there. Let's take a look at this when he comes down off the racetrack, and this is when he's trying. He's trying to be careful here. Imagine if he comes off of there during the race. See that thing flex up on the end there? There's some concerns about whether that thing's going to, how much pressure you can put on that and not break it. And what that thing is made out of, it's made out of MFT material, which is about 70% the strength of carbon fiber, but the good news for the owner is about 10% of the cost of carbon fiber. Good. And it has some give to it. David Reagan and the AAA Fusion, he's locked into the show. 23rd in owner points after a strong start to this season. 1594 the first lap quicker on lap two moves him up to 44th but that car has a qualifying exemption as do all the top 35 so the Roush Fenway Ford will be in the race on Sunday oh but after Sunday that all changes reset so the field comes down to this and Larry you are right Dale Jarrett unless A.J. Allmendinger runs better than a 1555. Jarrett will not have to use a champion's provisional. Here's the Red Bull Toyota of the open wheel star, Allmendinger. Pretty good in practice, and his teammate's not in too bad a shape. Let's see if he got anything to go with it. Scrubbed oh. the wall off for turn two. That's okay. Just didn't have the track's not big enough for him. He is giving it everything it's yes. worth, and it might be good enough. 1560. Did he it. will race on Sunday for the first time in 2007. In fact, both the Red Bull cars are there. Take care of your yeah. car. <laughs> <laughs> You've already scraped her up a little bit. Don't hurt it anymore. But you know what? He's that, That's good. Yes. That's letting it all hang out, though. I just made the bull mad. That's all that did. Yeah. Nice. Woohoo! He was getting all Baby. she had. <laughs> hang on, Sloopy. It wasn't pretty, but it was fast enough for Almondinger. You can't let up. The, the beautiful part is you can't let up. You did a great job, man. <laughs> yes, 34th, and they are in the show. Both Red Bull cars make the race. Kevin LePage will go home, and Dale Jarrett makes the show on time. Our final qualifier is Greg Biffle in the Jackson Hewitt Ford. Pretty good Flirting lap. with the pole. Pretty good lap. He's on it. 11. Yeah, he wasn't on it that good. 1540. <laughs> <laughs> Looking better here. Now you got a pie in three and four. He drove it in a little yeah. too deep. It paid the price. Would not it'll, stay it'll, down. It'll stick on that second lap through one and two, but it won't stick in three and four. From first through tenth, a lot like Bristol with the car of yesterday, a tenth of a second from positions one through ten. And Kevin LePage misses the show by three one hundredths of a second. Here is your front row. And Dick Berger is with the man who has just scored his 58th career Budweiser poll. Yeah, but you know what's really incredible? This is the 14th time here at Bristol. This guy is going to start on the front row out of 29 attempts, almost half. How do you do this? Well, I love the short tracks, and, uh, you know, you got to have a great team, obviously. And I I'll admit, we were here testing. I, I didn't think we'd ever run these kinds of speeds, and I didn't think that the DuPont Impala uh, was going to be able to, to run uh, that quick today. Uh, I, I owe apologies to, to Schrader. He told me that, uh, you know, I couldn't run better than a 31 for some, some other reasons. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, we, I couldn't, I never thought we'd run a 29. That's impressive. And you got to thank all the guys in this DuPont uh, Chevrolet team. You know, they, uh, they made improvements all day long uh, since testing made improvements you got to set it up pretty loose uh, to get through the middle and and it was but uh, man from the middle off it's fantastic can you run that loose on Sunday um, not all day long but you're gonna have to run pretty loose you know these cars just don't turn the middle like uh, the, the older cars do and so uh, I think you're gonna have to ha have a, a compromise of being pretty loose on entry we'll see uh, we're gonna we're gonna play we didn't play around with race setups at all today and it paid off for us so I'm pretty proud of that Steve the tart uh, all these guys I'm just so proud of my come out here you know this new car of tomorrow and and to be able to sit on the pole at a, a tricky racetrack it's a tricky place uh, with the travels and things we had to work with they did a fantastic job and it's a place where the driver matters a lot so congratulations
Jeff Gordon ties Bobby Allison for fifth on the all-time NASCAR pole winning list. We'll be back to review and wrap things up. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our loyal fans for your continued support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. AJ Allmendinger makes his first oh. race of 2007. The team is elated. Oh, what a What thrill, a great man. relief. Golly, that's so cool. Well, how tough is qualifying at Bristol first through 29th? separated by just a quarter of a second. And we talk about emotion in our sport. We got it every day, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all weekend long. And I think we've got it a lot in this qualifying session. We talked about the hometown favorite, Ward Burton, Morgan McClure racing. He's going to start 14th. We've got two drivers that's making their first start of 07, Almondinger and Jeremy Mayfield. We've got two drivers that have made every race on time. They will not race Joe Nemechek and Johnny Sauter. And Dale Jarrett, you see 30th gets to breathe a little easier, does not have to use the champion's provisional this week, keeps one in his pocket. So the drivers that make it in on time, Ward Burton, Mike Bliss, Sterling Marlin, Jeremy Mayfield, Brian Vickers, Kenny Wallace, Dale Jarrett, and A.J. Allmendinger. That means the going home list starts with Kevin LePage, two of the three Michael Waltrip racing cars, Waltrip and Rudiman, Joe Nemechek misses his first cup race in five years. Johnny Sauter and Paul Menard also go home. Tell you another story I think we're going to need to follow all weekend long. Man that won the race here a year ago, set on the pole in August. He is basically the slowest car of the 49 cars that qualified. Kurt Busch in that two car. Yeah, his car was really bad qualifying. And of course, you get a terrible pit selection. He's going to be over on the back straightaway. That could be real. Uh, be a real problem on uh, Sunday. The cars look all different, but there's that old saying, the more <laughs> things change, the more they stay the same. It's a close field. The drivers and the teams you'd expect to be on top are right there. So the car of tomorrow passes test one, qualifying on the High Bank Bristol Motor Speedway. We've got two rounds of practice for you tomorrow, and then the Food City 500 on Fox Sunday. It's going to be a big weekend of NASCAR across the Fox networks.